Peace, higher powers. It's your master chief, Sabi, indigenous. Higher, higher, higher power. Back in the booth. Now, on on this episode, we're going to talk about relationships. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 keys. 11 jewels. We got 11 jewels on relationships. First jewel is, why is it so hard to find an equal in a relationship? Now, a lot of brothers and sisters struggle in finding an equal in a relationship. Why is that? Because in all actuality... We have no equals. I know y'all like, Chief Savy, wait a second. Everybody is equal. No, 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 no. Everybody is unique. Everybody is different. See, people come together and we, we are like puzzle pieces. And we know that a puzzle isn't made with only two pieces. I mean, I'm pretty sure you could find one. But we all know what a puzzle is. A puzzle is multiple pieces put together now another point I want to bring up still on this first we still on this first jewel the first jewel is why is it so hard to find an equal in a relationship and that's because we're searching and we're looking towards opposites see I have a podcast coming up about opening and closing oneself and it's very sublime and it's going to be very unique and it's going to be very sincere and you're going to want to check it out because we are closed to opportunity. We are closed to finding oneself inside of another person, to finding a kindred soul, to finding an equal or kindred spirit. We are closed to that. But on that first jewel, why is it so hard to find an equal in a relationship? I have to say because we as individuals, we have no equals. Like we sincerely have no equals. We'll build on that some more. Now, the second jewel is nobody is perfect. The second jewel is nobody is perfect. See, we go about seeking relationships and we think that we have to find the perfect person we think that that if we like somebody that we have to make them perfect we have to change them i'm telling you now higher powers there there's roughly nine billion people in the world and instead of finding your soulmate instead of finding your partner instead of finding someone to jump on your ship in relations we go about just picking off of lower self see we strive we strive to embrace the lower self and we openly defy the most high by not accepting and 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 being one with the higher self See, nobody is perfect. Why is nobody perfect? See, people are quick to tell you that I'm not perfect or man is not perfect or I'm not perfect. Just just love me the way I am. But yet you don't know what makes you not perfect. What makes you not perfect is because you're stuck in the flesh. The flesh is of the lower self and therefore it can never reach perfection. Now, you can perfect your body by changing your diet, changing the way you think. The way you think is the way you are. The way you think is the way you look. Have you ever, has anyone ever walked up to you and said, what's on your mind? Has anyone ever tell you, told you like, oh, you got a stink face or don't look at me like that or... Watch your eyes or why you mugging or 
What's wrong? Are you angry? And it's because the thoughts, your very thinking process affects your appearance. Like I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes how someone could be standing upright. Someone could be feeling themselves. And it would take one insult. It would take one bad comment. It would take one bad joke. It would take one bad person. To just simply, and, and no other better words to use, but to simply deflate a person. Like, have you ever seen someone just have the wind knocked out of them? Have you ever seen words make someone's whole appearance just change? Have you ever said something mean and seen someone get so angry that they almost look like a demon? That's that lower self. See, when you interact with, when you're functioning in your lower self, you can only interact with lower self. Like, for example, if I'm functioning on higher self, if I'm if I'm quelling and suppressing the bad qualities of myself and the lower parts of myself, you could never communicate with me. If you're on the lower self, all that can communicate with you is my lower self. So if you come angry with me, my lower self is going to defend the higher self. Because even though I've suppressed it, even though I've quelled it, even though I've tried to kill the ego, even though I've put down the ego, even though I've... Even though I'm functioning in the higher self, my lower self still has a duty. It's not mad. It, 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 it's not mad. The lower self doesn't think. The lower, the lower self only reacts. Think about it, higher powers. The higher self thinks. The lower self only reacts. The lower self is moved off of animalistic qualities. Hunger, sleep, lust, hate, anger, etc., etc., and so forth into infinity and beyond. So nobody's perfect. We all trapped in the lower self. We can't seek, we can't seek perfection. We can't enrich our minds, enrich our spirits, enrich our bodies through proper food. Spiritual food, thinking food, mental food, energetic food, and physical food. Nutrients. People forget that you got to nutrient your mind. That's why it's so hard to find an equal in a relationship. Because nobody is perfect and yet you're coming you're coming at someone with the lower self. Our women throw, throw that ass in a circle. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a joke. But our women think that their bodies... Is what attract the male when really all in, in all in in all actuality, a woman's mind is the most beautiful thing that she has. A woman's mind is the most beautiful thing that she has, and a man the same way. We think that we have to be draped in design, or we think that we have to have fancy clothes. We think that we have to pay the most and do the most and drive the big cars and things like that. When really your mind, women are attracted to my mind. Women are attracted to your mind. When you function in higher consciousness and higher self, you'll begin to understand that. You'll begin to understand that. You'll be you'll begin to in, understand that, which is internalizing data or information or knowledge or right knowledge. Are you with me, higher powers? Now, the third jewel is relationship. Actually, means relation. Ship, and I and I touched briefly on it earlier, but we're gonna build on it right here. See, when you're on a when you when you enter that vo when you enter that voyage, you hop on that ship in relations with someone. You gotta realize you're rocking out, and right now you're in muddy, you're in murky waters, you're in uncharted territory. See. People, people get in a relationship and it doesn't work out. And instead of leaving out of that relationship and thinking like, hey, what was it about me that wasn't right for her? What was it about me that wasn't right for him? And instead, we run straight to another ship. You just jump in boats. You just jump from ship to ship, boat to boat. Roll, roll, roll your boat. But you're not even doing it gently down the stream. You're tearing up your body. Male and female. 
Men think that, oh, I got a, I got a phallus so I can just stick it anywhere and just clean it off. And it's, no, 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 no. The different germs and bacteria that, 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 that keep a woman clean and safe. You know, there is good germs and there is good bacteria, you all, inside of the woman's womb that keeps her womb safe, healthy, and clear. But when a man goes from woman to woman, woman to woman, woman to woman, ship to ship to ship to ship, selling the seas and nowhere to go, no chart, no map, no navigation skills at all. When he's doing that, acting whorish, he doesn't realize that you're, you're, you're putting yourself in contact with different bacteria, different germs. Each woman is unique. Each woman... Each woman is unique. They're, they're individuals. So therefore, you're, you're, you're opening yourself up to all kinds of things that you know not what of. Same thing to women. Now, women, I'll never be hard on my sisters. But at the same time, you know better. And if you don't know better, you should know better. But the problem is, look, the problem is with our relationships, male and female, we grew up in households where there was no mother and father. And some of you all did have mother and father. Don't let me sleep on you. That doesn't mean this message isn't for you. We're just talking about the masses. We're talking about the, the, the majority of our people. The majority of our people's fathers are dead. The majority of our people's fathers are incarcerated. The majority of our people's fathers are on drugs the majority of our people fathers are just MIA missing in action the majority of of black and Latino um, mothers and fathers are spending all of their time at work yeah they're working for the right reasons yeah they're working to bring their children up and to build for their family but at the same time there's no time spent with that child how can a child raise himself? How can a nanny ever be a mother? How can a babysitter ever be a father? How can a stepfather ever love a child like it's his own? Impossible. The term beat you like a stepkid is not just a term. I experienced it. I experienced it. 12 years of my life. The hardest part of that was thinking that that was my real father. I never knew that wasn't my father. I thought he was beating me because I needed it. I thought he was beating me because it was my fault. Let's, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. Look, now, if we know relationships is actually a relationship, y'all niggas stop jumping ship. See, we leave out a relationship with a person, and instead of refining ourselves and Getting ourselves together and seeing where we went wrong, not the other person, seeing what we did wrong, what we could have did better, what we could have changed about ourselves, where we could have yielded. In martial arts, we learn about give. We learn to give. We learn to take. We learn to receive. We learn to, to take a punch in order to give a harder one. And that's what people don't do in relationships. They don't know how to take criticism. They don't know how to take, take hurt. And yet give love. That's what you got to do. When someone hurts you, you take it and you give back love. And if you, if you, if you, if this person can't internalize that love and reflect it back on you, you just exit yourself. You minus yourself from the equation and let that person show its true colors. Because either that person will do as I'm saying, like I'm doing now, instead of jumping in a new ship, I sit back and wait for my voyage to come back. I see what parts of me that I should have changed. How many times that I didn't give. How many times that I, I gave, but yet I wouldn't take. Et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. Let's go to the next jewel. Let's go to the next jewel. Voyages aren't forever. The next jewel is voyages aren't forever. Now, if y'all don't know what a voyage is, a voyage is when you sail the seas in a ship. And now, if we know our ship is called Relations, the one we're speaking on right now is called Relations. 
See, see, people, people get stuck in relationships, right? And they, they, we're, we're in our 20s, we're in our teens, we're in our 30s, we're in our 40s, 50s, 60s. And we think that this relationship must work. We must stay on this ship no matter what. We must allow ourselves to be beat. We must allow ourselves to be uh, dehumanized. We must allow ourselves to be humiliated. Because this person loves me. This person cares about me. This person is a better person. I just know it. But you don't know that you're hurting that person by staying there. Because as long as you stay there, that person thinks it's okay. And then a lot of times, relationships are just... A lot of times, relationships are just for that moment. And instead of that moment, we plan so we plan so far into the future that we don't even appreciate that person for the limited amount of time that we had. And this build, this build isn't nothing I learned off the internet, nothing I let, learned off a book. I learned that right at my mother's feet, paradise. My father, my father and my mother were together six months. My father and my mother were together six months and then they were married. They stayed together another six months trying to make a baby. My father was 68. His name was Old Man. My father was 68 and they couldn't make a baby. And they went, my, my father went to the, they went to the um, f- fertility clinic and they told him his, his sperm count was so low that it was a, it was a less than 5% chance. My mother said she, she laid hands on my father's phallus and laid hand on my on, on her own womb and, and she prayed and she prayed for a baby she prayed for a baby and she got her baby and then here come nine months later what kind of cruel trick of faith is that that boom 1993 my father standing on the porch and was gunned down like an animal gunned down took him from my mother boom what a trick of faith but you know what I learned from my mother? She says, that was my first husband and I love that man more than I'll ever love anyone else. And the time we spent together was, was greater than any time I've ever spent with any other being. And that's where I learned this build right here. I'm dropping to y'all. I learned that from my mother to know that voyages aren't forever. And when you're on that ship with someone, enjoy it. Rock that boat. But just know, just live each day like it's the last. But just know that, hey, when it's over, it's over. It shouldn't be no hard feelings. It shouldn't be no saltiness. It shouldn't be no hate. You shouldn't be cruel to that person. You shouldn't be mean to them on social media. You shouldn't blast them. You shouldn't, you shouldn't show the world their insecurities. Because you wouldn't want the world seeing yours. It doesn't matter if you have children together. When it's over, it's over. When it's done, it's done. You can't force it. Only thing that comes from forcing a relationship is pain. And you know it and I know it. Let's go. Let's go. Keep rocking, Chief Sabi. Now, the next jewel is don't miss your doc. Now, that is the same thing as voyages aren't, aren't, aren't forever. Because I say don't miss your doc, that means when, it, when it's time, you can't let another person stop your doc. You can't let another person make you miss your destination. See, sometimes you got to learn how to be in a relationship and strive towards a goal. It doesn't matter if that's not both of you all's goals. This person may want it for forever, but as long as you know you're going to treat this person right for why you have them, but yet... This isn't the person you want to be with. Just don't miss your dot. Don't stay in it. Just don't don't hold on to a relationship because you don't want to hurt someone's feelings. Don't hold on to a relationship because uh, of what your parents would think, of what your sisters and brothers would think, what y'all uh, mutual friends would think, what your pastor would think, what your imam would think, what your what your priest would think. No, don't miss your dot because I'm telling you, it's a long, long journey. When you miss your doc, you have to what? Travel around the world and it takes more than a year. I'm telling you, you put yourself through hell. You put yourself through hell. See, some people think you have to put yourself through hell to make love right. Sometimes you do. 
But a lot of times it's not love with that person. You make love right within them in yourself. You cannot properly love someone else until you properly love yourself. Check out my other podcast where I'm talking about quiet reflection and 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 um alienation and things of that nature where I'm just talking about just give yourself some me time, some you time. Man, I love so hard. Sometimes I think that I could never live without a person, but then boom, I'm living. Sometimes I think I can't breathe, eat or sleep without a person, then boom, I'm breathing. I'm eating, I'm sleeping. Come on now. Come on. Keep going, Chief Saban. Why? The next jewel is why we hold on. Why do we hold on to toxic relationships? Why do we hold on to people who don't have the same goals as us, who don't have the same dreams, the same vision, the same end game as us? Why? That's because of outside of influences. Pardon self, outside influences, for one, the aforementioned people, mothers, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, friends, mutual friends, etc., family members, etc., your preacher, teachers, imams, etc., telling you you don't know what's best for your heart, telling you it's your duty to make it right, it's your duty to work it out, oh, that's your children's father, work it out, oh, that's your baby mother, work it out, no, it's not. Somebody's going to end up dead. Somebody's going to end up in jail. Somebody's going to end up hurt. Somebody's going to end up not the same. We force ourselves to stay in relationships and then we hurt the other person. We hurt ourselves. We make ourselves toxic for the next person. Therefore, we are what? Closing ourselves. We're closing ourselves. Keep going, Chief Saban. Now... The next point, the next jewel is the real relationship has nothing to do with being a couple, you know. Say it one more time, Chief Sabe. The real relationship has nothing to do with being a couple, you know. See, when you when when you meet a friend, that's relations. When you communicate with someone over the phone, that's relations. When you have family, that's relations. You got to choose carefully who's on your ship. If you're trying to be in a relationship as far as partnership, partners is another ship. When you want to be in a relationship with someone, you want to come together in that divine unity, which is man and woman. When you want to do that. You got to realize that sometime you have too many people on your ship. How the hell are you going to treat a man right when your mother is on your ship? How the hell are you going to treat a woman right when your father is on the ship? When your cousin is on the ship? When your brother is on the ship? How the hell are y'all going to treat each other right when your ship is full? You can't even go to the you can't even go cook you a meal cuz it's already bro man in the kitchen from the fifth floor. He on your ship too. Everybody on our ships. Think about it, higher powers. This right knowledge, right guidance coming from Chief Sabi. You now tuned in to psychology with Chief Sabi. Indigenous, and this shit is real. This is just real. Now. Now listen, listen. Now I'm going to say this. The next jewel is. You must relate to I on our ship. (laughs) Check that out. You must relate to I on our ship. That's a breakdown. See, we got etymology of words, which is the studying of words and their roots. And then you have then you have what we call the breakdown of words, which is finding the inner esoteric meaning inside of every word that's in existence. You can break them all down into acronyms or into just breakdowns. I'll teach y'all how to do that in the future, hype pal. Shout out to the shout out to the tribe. L F T O M, we on the rise. Now, it says you must relate to I on our ship. What does that mean? Now, first of all, if we can't relate, if we can't relate, 
that means there's ego in play. If someone can't relate to your lower self and your higher self, how the hell are you going to be on the same ship? How are you going to be on the same ship? Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect for each other. Nobody's equal in a relationship. No. You can treat each other equal. You can have equal power, equal authority, equal equal decision making. You can have equal rulership. You can have equal equal money, equal everything. But yet in the inside of you, in the inside of you, nobody is equal because we're all made perfect. We're all made different. We're all made unique by the most high himself. Now. Another meaning for you must relate to I on our ship. I'm talking about the tribe. I'm not going to. We ain't allowing just no anybody in our tribe. We're not desperate for members. We're not desperate for 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 companionship. We're not desperate for anybody to be on our ship. Matter of fact, we want the least amount of people as possible on our ship. And you got to relate to the I. And I broke down that. That, that the ego is that sense of I, that sense of isness. But yet when you quell the, the ego, you suppress the ego, you kill the ego, that you are now a part of the community of self, which is I. I am you. You are me. We. Us. So you got to relate to us. Because we, we all on the same path. We all striving towards the same goal. We all want the same things in life. We all creating our, our own reality over here at the tribe. You don't have to be a part of the tribe to get the information, no. But if you want the right guidance, you want that esoteric information, you want that information that, you know, the, the them can't get, the outsiders can't get, you know. Link up with the tribe. We on the rise, and we building, and we got a homeland. Now, check this out. That brings us to the, the next jewel. The next jewel is don't miss your cruise. Uh-oh. The next jewel is don't miss your cruise. What that means, T Sabi? When I say don't miss your cruise, I'm talking about on the on the individual level. You know when you're stuck in a relationship that ain't going nowhere. You know when you're in a toxic relationship. You know when you got a deadbeat. You know when you got a nothing ass fill in the blank. You know when somebody doesn't have the same goals, the same, the same, that doesn't want shit out of life. You know who you're with. And yet, when someone better comes in your life, when someone who does have the same views, the same goals, someone who does have something in them that you like that that you are attracted to that are or are, are of like-minded individuals and you let you let them leave out of your life you let the cruise just sail off notice a cruise notice i use cruise instead of ship because a cruise is what luxury we're not talking about financial we're talking about that inner peace be my peace baby or you can leave, baby. Yeah, because I'm on a cruise. I'm on a peaceful cruise. I'm on a peaceful cruise. Even if I get rowdy as hell, I'm on a peaceful cruise. My end of peace is dead. Now, slave ships. The next jewel is slave ships. Y'all know what a slave ship is. You're going to work, work, work all day. Come home clean, 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 clean. Sex, 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 sex. Please, 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 please. Another person. You are a slave. Wake up, sis. You are a slave. Wake up, bruh. Hey, a, a, a trick is a trick and treat them accordingly. I understand. But yet, indeed, you know if you are being handled in a relationship. This is to my brothers and my sisters. You know if you're being played. You know if you're being used. You're not on a cruise. Why, why do you have to do all the work? Why do you have to be the backbone of the relationship when, when it should be 50-50? 
hell. And if you if you practice polygyny or polygamy, it should be 30, 30, 30. Don't forget the threes in the point three, point three, point three. I'm just saying like whatever floats your cruise. You make sure you own that cruise and don't allow anyone to, to sink your ship. Forget what society thinks. Forget what your mother and brother and sister thinks. Forget what your pastor and your preacher and your imam and your whatever thinks. You don't want to be on a slave ship. You don't want to miss your dock. You don't want to let your your, your crew sail, sail by. Love yourself and find someone that loves you like you love you. If you can't love someone, leave them because you're hurting them for the next person. If you can't love someone, you can't treat someone right, leave them alone. I'm telling you, there's nine billion, to the brothers out here, there's nine billion people in the world and six billion of them is women. Stop doing these sisters like that. You don't got to drag a sister through the mud. You don't got to use a sister. You... You ain't got to uh, be used by sister. Like, like, jump off that ship. This is my brothers and my sisters. Y'all jump off that ship. Now, y'all know, y'all know I had to add this last one. Y'all know I had to add this last one. And that's culture ship. And I spelled that capital C-U-L-T, lowercase U-R-E, capital S-H-I-P, big ship. A yacht. Say, man, when you when you when you can separate yourself and and jump out of that ship with that toxic person, when you can jump out of that ship with them toxic people, when you want to get on a cruise, even if you cruising by yourself, y'all just come cruise to the culture. We need like minded individuals. We need non toxic individuals. We need. Builders, we need leaders. We don't want no followers. All the followers, y'all can go to Instagram and go follow. My Instagram is Sable Illuminati if you want to follow me. But if you want to lead with me, if you want to take that step and walk with the most high who guides me. Y'all jump on that culture ship. Right now, I'm, 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 I'm a captain of a big ship, and it's called culture. I'm just telling you, it's time to tribe up. It's time to culture up. It's time to wise up. It's time to man up and woman up. I love you all, higher powers. It's a blessing to be able to reach out to you all. It's a blessing to be able to grace you all's phone. I ain't talking out the side of my neck. I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking from life. I'm speaking from life lessons. I'm speaking from from stuff I learned through my journey. I'm sharing my individual journey with you all. I love you all. It's always peace. It's always love. It's always unity. Y'all check out the culture, man. Check out. Come, come home. Come home to nature. Don't miss your ship. I love you all. It's peace, higher powers.